Hello viewers, my name is Puku Choo Choo and welcome to the first war game air land battle multiplayer commentary. So uh, today we'll be checking out a, uh, a fairly small match that I played earlier against my opponents whose, uh, whose name is Silver Oak 2. Mine is of course Pew Pew Choo Choo as always. Um, so uh, a little bit about this match. I played it after suffering you know, one, one defeat with one particular opponent named Frank who uh, had a pretty unique deck combo, uh, one that I haven't seen before, so I I kind of wanted to copy his build. I mean, it was quite effective, and I felt that it was uh, actually uh, quite great, and you'll probably be seeing a, uh, a link to uh, that match right now, actually. So we will be, uh, we'll be going with a fairly infantry-heavy deck, which is uh, suited for this infantry-heavy map. So uh, my opponent is playing Pact over here. He's deploying a lot of infantry at the start, but I don't know that yet because I am going to put this view camera onto my own perspective. So my uh, my objective for this map here is just simply to gain um, a little bit of map control and really just see how the battle goes from there. So I bought a. Uh about quite a lot of units inside Humvees and some of these uh, infantry units inside these TGB uh, haulers and I just kinda wanna show you guys the uh, units that I bought here first. Um, most of this is just of course obviously infantry. We got Humvees which are uh, fairly fast and small uh, transport vehicles weighing in at 5 points with this top speed of 80. We've got hum we've got a uh, no not more Humvees. We've got these uh, TGB 13 Swedish uh, what seem to be APCs, although they could be like minivans or something like that. Um, either way, they are weighing in at one point, a surprisingly cheap amount, uh, but they go for 100 kilometers. Now, unfortunately, my opponent does get a nice bombing run uh, in here, but I do believe his plane does get uh, quite a little beating here. Nope, maybe not. I think we take it out. We, I think we take out that SU-24 on its second run. But anyways, he does a uh, he does a little bit of damage. But overall, we haven't lost very much. Now, my goal is to just kind of secure this little farm here and this little uh, outcrop of uh, suburbia. Uh, but one thing that I noticed was that my opponent is buying quite a lot of um, armored vehicles and they're sending it all of my way. So uh, at this point, I thought he was going to rush me with quite a lot of things. I'm deploying some of these light riflemen, uh, infantry slash ATGM units. They have uh, they have decent anti-infantry capabilities and all like they have okay anti-tank abilities. So uh, we're trying to just kind of handle this little group of infantry um, right at the start. It looks like we're both going for this uh, little piece of area right here. I'm going to put the game on full speed right now. Um, unfortunately, those light riflemen, uh, I feel like their only real weakness is that they can't uh, deal with vehicles coming right up next to them because their anti-tank guided missiles can only be fired one off at a time. Um, some of the planes that I bought uh, in um, some of the planes that I bought are some of these French uh, cheapo bomber planes that only go for 50 a piece and they were uh, actually quite effective. You see here that we get uh, quite a few nice bombing hits off of his uh, little BTR column. And just like that. I uh, actually took these vehicles from a opponent earlier, once again the same guy, uh, Frank actually, because I actually found these things highly effective. Um, they're fairly cheap planes and they, well they do their job right, they can stun tanks and destroy infantry, uh, so they essentially become really expendable little bomb droppers, right? And that's their, uh, their, that's their primary purpose, expendable aircraft really. So that's kind of that. Fortunately, these uh, light infantrymen, they don't last very long in the face of the enemy um, with this many units. Uh, but overall, that's alright. Uh, so long as we can kind of get control of some territory over the bridge, I, I would be happy. Uh, the main thing that we're trying to do here is avoiding the enemy from pushing us to the bridge. Um, during this process, we can rack up quite a few points. Another unit that I've bought here, which is um, which are these Swedish infantry groups, is um, I buy these simply because they're actually quite effective in dealing with infantry. They cost only 10 points each. They have decent anti-tank potential, but the main thing is that you get so many of them for only 10 bucks. 
Uh, my opponent here is using MIGs against us. Uh, he's probably going to fly those into my, my air net over here, but I've also ha I also have some Tomahawk planes, which are able to just kind of take these things down with a fairly easy... Uh, with ease, really. So the plane uh, tries to come past us, and it gets shot down. And we nabbed a, a nice little 175 points for destroying some of those elite uh, units. We're well, sorry, these uh, these F-14s are called Tomcats, not Tomahawks. My uh, my apologies. Uh, the main thing about them is that their missile, their air-to-air -air missile range is a whopping 12 kilometers, so they are quite deadly. Um, one thing that I noticed was that if you have any of these like extremely cheap trucks, it's often better just to send them your enemies his way because his uh, Pooter Conqueror's anti-tank guided missile squad here uh, is actually firing on them and I believe these squads only have about 12 missiles inside their little inventory so if you uh, if you do send those up they'll probably take a few losses um, your trucks will probably take a few losses but at least uh, you're wasting the enemies valuable anti-tank missiles now in the meantime, it looks like we found some more infantry on the road, so uh, we're really trying to hold on to the bridgehead here and just essentially try to get as many uh, infantry troops inside this little village here as possible. We're in the lead by, uh, by quite a bit actually, we are over them by almost half. And with that uh, little plane drop, that does massive amounts of damage. So overall, like things look pretty good from my perspective. Uh, even though they're trying to enclose at us uh, on this bridge here, I haven't noticed any um, anti-tank or sorry anti-air missiles coming from any of his terrain back here. So overall, it looks like we have air dominance with our uh, cheapo planes. So that's uh, that, well, that's pretty good, right? All I need to do is just keep dropping munitions onto the enemy, and that should really uh, be it. Yeah, those uh, those bombs really do a ton of damage. Uh, even if they don't kill the infantry, it'll either stun them or make them panic, making them, uh, well, essentially useless, right? One thing I noticed was that these uh, these infantry are actually using Mauser rifles, and, like, those things are... I don't know, they, they seem to be bolt-action rifles, right? So, I mean, that's uh, that's pretty pretty old school. Uh, but anyways, I'm still trying to get like uh, garrison some of these buildings. Both of us has the same idea to really play a infantry heavy deck, and it looks like he's trying to move onto me with his uh, Motor Strelik infantry, and I'm trying to move to uh, towards him with my cheap uh, Swedish infantry. So overall, that re uh, that results in a few battles. I believe this is when we shoot down his uh, Su-26. So it comes in for a run on my Martyr Roland, hits it but doesn't take it out. However, it does stun it, so it doesn't shoot. He evacs it right here. I bring in my uh, my Tomcat any minute now and I try to take it out. This plane looks like it looks like it took a hit, right? So um, at least that's that's that. I think I play. Yeah, here's my plane. It fires immediately, but unfortunately, his uh, his Tomcat disappears. The good thing is that he uh, he never took down my Martyr Roland, which is rather nice. I, I thought I was going to lose that unit at first. Now during this entire process, I'm thinking I need to expand my bridgehead here, simply because if I don't, he's going to be moving up a lot of my a lot of infantry, and the minute he gets past that bridge, he's going to have a major advantage. If he gets this, if he gets past this uh, little bridgehead here, he's probably going to be able to spot my uh, command vehicle. And the main thing that uh, the biggest change from European escalation um, that um, that I feel is that if uh, if the enemy spots your command vehicle, typically they'll be able to take it out with a plane strike, no matter how much anti-air you have, right? So. You, you really need to go and double up on those command vehicles, and I know I haven't done that yet. You really need to double up on those, and you really need to double up on air protection. Air protection should always be like a constant thing. Uh, it's a good thing my opponent here isn't using any bomber craft. They don't have any napalm or any infantry killing potential, so that's pretty good. I'm, uh, well, I'm really glad that they didn't, but uh, just to be safe, I move up some of these LLAD javelin troops, which are 15 uh, bucks a piece. They have a fairly good um, anti-air launcher, although I feel like it's more suited for helicopters. So right now we're just trying to expand our little infantry um, 
bulb here, bulge here. I think the correct word would be salient. What salient? Anyways, he does have these uh, buildings over here occupied, this little farm complex and the little suburbs, which really shouldn't be here. Uh, so I'm trying to move my infantry up to uh, this farm right here to just try to counter that. And in the meantime, I sent some more of my infantry into the village just to try to secure the that uh, this area. And one of the things that I noticed is that even though the uh, the tanks and the troops are all to scale with each other, for some reason I just don't know why the vehicles, the, the like civilian cars inside this game look really strange. Like, look at that! A person is taller than that car by so much. Uh, one of the units he brings in to counter my infantry, and I've got to say this is fairly effective, is this BMPT-2. Uh, these little things have a grenade launcher on them, uh, which fires fairly fast, I might add, and he's just going to bombard my uh, infantry with these. The pain in the ass about these things is that they also have good frontal armor. Look at that, 15 frontal armor. That's as much as a Abrams tank. So, uh, these things are really crucial for... Well, I find that these things are a little crucial for uh, Soviet players going up against infantry because he's just going to uh, kind of block me with those things. The bad thing, however, is that his uh, his ATGM launchers are trying to snipe my uh, my Sheftin tank here, which was putting fire on it. Uh, these Sheftin tanks they go for 65 points apiece. They have a fairly high ranged cannon. Um, they have 14 frontal armor and they have a decent gyro stabilizer but the bad thing is that they only go at 40 kilometers per hour so these tanks they I would say that they're good if they, you can get them to the enemy so I'm trying to uh, just kinda one on one his uh, little BMPT thing over here his BMPT uh, can and can actually outrange ours which is a uh, really fairly fairly impressive and I don't know how many of these things he gets but those are those are one of his star units for sure. In the meantime I kinda of split up my inventory inside this little town just to uh, kind of cover more territory and really see what he does. Uh, so that's kinda of that for now I mean he captures Delta uh, there's not much going on I'm just trying to reinforce my positions and I'm trying to think of a way to deal with that BMPT because to be fair, I've, I've I've actually never seen that unit be played. Um, although its infantry dealing potentials are are noted for sure, definitely. I bring up some more. I bring up some uh, light infantrymen, not uh, not this Swedish infantry group, uh, because it looks like he's driving that vehicle fairly close to our lines. And I felt like if I could get some light riflemen to shoot a few rockets at it, uh, I feel like that would actually take it out. A firefight breaks out between the Motostrelik over here and our infantry, however we weren't able to take that out unfortunately, and in the meantime his little BMPT sneaks in there and hits us hard. Now at this point I'm, I'm a little frustrated with those BMPT, so I decide to drop a few uh, airstrikes on them, and I do believe we get one eventually. You know, it would be really nice if I could see uh, the amount of planes I have, have um, but unfortunately it doesn't show that. At this point I believe I had about um, six bomber planes and about one uh, air superiority uh, craft. So I have a large selection of planes that I can just kind of use. And at this point the point totals on the side were down by about uh, 50 points, which isn't that much, right? I get some more uh, light infantry to move up simply because we do need to uh, eliminate those little uh, BMPT things. Originally, I actually thought they were really cheap units, but they actually go for 70 a pop, so I guess uh, I guess they're worth the price, to say the least. And I get my infantry here to garrison up these two storage tank things. I saw his BMPT move inside this area um, when I was playing, and uh, I also noticed that he's bringing up some infantry, so I bought one of these uh, Vulcan arm little... APC things just to kind of handle the infantry and I get it to kind of spray down this little uh, complex right here because it looked like there was some infantry inside there. He's moving up a few of these heavier tanks, the T-80Us, to kind of try to pick me out of my location here, so uh, to kind of counter that I believe I buy a few M1A1 Abrams tanks. Now, uh, when these tanks come into effect, I don't really know, but here, um, my light riflemen were trying to snipe this BMPT, 
uh, but because of its frontal armor being a value of 15, we were only doing like one damage to the thing. It was um, these things are actually incredibly tough, and you really do need uh, some sort of tank to take them down. Yeah, I get two hits off of there, and it's still not dead. So I thought that was that was rather neat. I see this one soul T-80U move up, so I get my uh, my air fleet over here, and I just bomb the crap out of it. You'll see that these uh, Tungustas, well, whatever they are, puts are are trying to put a lot of uh, fire onto me, but you know the planes just fly right away. Those uh, those Tungustas and those things armed with auto cannons, they're not necessarily all that good against uh, aircraft, although they are good against helicopters, is what I I find. Yeah, I believe. Uh, do I buy those things now? Do I buy those Abrams at this point? No. I just try to strike them down with more planes, and I think I get one. Yeah, we got uh, we got this one over here. Now I see that he's advancing. He's uh, he's moving far, but he doesn't really have anything to support his BMPT. So we get that one too. He brings in that Su-24 again, and I believe this is when it dies. Yeah. Our Tomcat gets a missile lock on him, takes it out, and uh, well, no, it hits it. The plane is stunned, and then it takes it out with its uh, little auto cannon armed on the front. So that was nice. And uh, because my opponent suffered about four heavy losses, the plane, that T-80U, the two BMPTs overall in total, giving me about oh, say I don't know, more than 350 points is what I would put the total to. Uh, but unfortunately, he is pushing our uh, our little bridgehead here back. Um, that's that's the thing that I'm worried now about. He's moving up some of these uh, anti-tank guided missile launchers to just kind of snipe our tanks just like that. Uh, but the good thing is that these Abrams should be able to kind of charge through those uh, anti-tank guided missiles and just really do some heavy damage. So, like, see there, they got two hits off, but uh, they're still not down. They still have almost full health, uh, which is rather good. And with the Abrams, they have a really good gyro stabilizer and a fairly far-reaching frontal cannon, so I am able to just kind of uh, pour down HE rounds onto them. And at this point, I need to take out those Pooter Conquerors uh, fast, just in case he has any air power, so I bring in my, uh, my air fleet again. And you know, I'm not really sure if I've lost any planes up, to, well, up until this point, but uh, anywho... Uh, it would be nice to check that though. We are in the lead now by almost 500 points, or actually more than 500 points, which is rather nice at this point. He's trying to take out some of my Abrams tanks here, and he's, uh, from the looks of it, he's actually trying to flank me, which is the right thing to do, of course, but he's moving in uh, single T-80U tanks, which is uh, definitely something that you don't want to be doing, and in addition, he was, uh, he was not using the reverse command, which is a little bit of a problem. If your tanks don't reverse they'll put their back armor and notice how the T-80U has a value of 20 for its front armor but a value of 3 for its rear armor if I go if I get those Abrams shots into his rear armor that would do tremendous damage and that's why you really have to use that G hotkey and move your units back brings in another one of these MIG things and I believe this one's also taken out does it no it does not um, from the looks of his bomb drops, he's trying to snipe my command vehicle. Uh, like I said earlier, you really need to buy two command vehicles, and I know I haven't done that yet, but my reasoning for that is that if you take out anybody's lone command vehicle, they will lose immediately, with me only having one and him trying to bombard me with those uh, plane strikes. If he takes that sole command vehicle out, out he could have won this game a long time ago. Even if he guessed positions with, uh, with a ton of aircraft, he might have won a long time ago. So you really need to get on that um, here try to snipe me with this T-80U. The T-80 series have these amazing anti-tank guided missile launchers. This one has a range of, of uh, 2.8 kilometers, which is really, really impressive. Uh, but the good thing is that we are able to get right up next to that tank, snipe it out, and that tank went for a whopping 170 points. However, we do lose an M1 Abrams trying to do that. Uh, however, these M1 Abrams are only worth 135 points. And of course, these Abrams have already paid their price. They've already eliminated more than uh, what they're valued at. So I'll just speed this up. 
Yeah, some fighting breaks out with his uh, infantry again, and I believe I buy that um, I buy that command vehicle fairly soon. Got a good airstrike on that uh, cluster of infantry, though. Still trying to move up some of his uh, anti-tank guided missile launchers to try to uh, take the offensive and push onto me. Uh, overall, that didn't really do much. Yeah, they were we were able to fight those back uh, rather fast. The only problem is that he started buying these uh, BMPT-2s again. Uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to take that out immediately. However, we were able to uh, grab the two Oska anti-air guided uh, or anti-air launchers. And I think at this point, he uh, he really stacks up a lot of um, anti-air units. Yeah, he's bringing in a few more Oskas, snipe that out once again. Um, those Oska launchers, here I'll put the camera on neutral for a second here. These Oska launchers, they go for 20 apiece. They, uh, they're not necessarily good um, for, they're not necessarily the best anti-air launchers uh, in my opinion, but one of the things that I should note is that all anti-air launchers generally come in packs of 8, so uh, they have quite a little bit of rarity to them. So if you're able to eliminate all of them, um, like even, no matter the price, they don't have to go for they don't have to uh, be you know a hundred piece uh, weapons for you to go after them but if you can eliminate them um, then go for them if they're vulnerable then go from them simply because uh, the, your opponent probably doesn't have a lot of them and then here I'm trying to move up my uh, my Hamash also, um, up to these houses I don't know why there's like a blank field here that was kind of strange uh, to try to find his his little command vehicle Put this back onto my perspective again because, I, like at this point, I have no idea where it is. Although I would imagine it being closer to the enemies is a uh, original depot. Unfortunately, he is having field day sniping my infantry here, so I bring in a single plane uh, to you know, try to drop some more bombs, try to take it out because I did see it for uh, for a second there. However, uh, I was unable to, and I believe he actually does take my plane now. No. So at this point, we are fairly close to game over. We are at 1923 out of the 2,000 points that we need. Uh, we have about a yeah, we have like a 600 point lead on our opponent here, and we only really need to take out one target to uh, actually finish off the game. So I'm kind of feeling about I'm feeling like taking out one of these T80Us would be a good idea. He charges them up for some reason, and uh, well, I'm gonna try to take this out, get the light rifleman to fire at it. Uh, I know that light rifleman might not do it, but they these Hamas shells have a decent chance of taking this thing out. Yeah, two rockets in, and then look at that, it's at two bars health. Uh, the other one's fine though, however, this is the one that we're pouring Abrams tanks rounds in, uh, so I'm trying to go for this one right now. Just two more rounds, and that should be it. Oh, no, we need one more, one more, and that's pretty much game over. There we go, bam! So that was uh, that round of War game air land battle it was quite fun. Uh, we did quite a lot of damage to them. Overall, I feel like we could have uh, we could have learned to you know deploy our infantry a little bit uh, better. Uh, but overall, that was a fairly successful round. We've uh, we learned to just kind of buy more command vehicles. Uh, I don't think I actually bought two there. Um, some I, I remember buying two. I don't know why um, it's not there, but oh well. Um, so we do have to do that, we have to provide constant air cover, and it looks like uh, on some of these maps, infantry is key, um, and yeah. So I'll see you guys in the next multiplayer commentary, be, liked. be sure to like and subscribe for more as always. Um, see you guys later on, bye bye.